watching right now in the procedure room is Michael Yang taking a hit of salvia. It's a legal hallucinogenic drug. It's going to take him a minute or two before he feels the full effects. And right now, as he's taking the second hit, this drug is entering his lungs and going directly through his blood into his brain. And very soon, this hallucinogen is going to not only affect the way his brain works, but also how his body functions. You see the brain of Michael is starting to feel the effects of salvia. How are you feeling? Really high. Okay. Let's try to walk. And we're going to have Dr. Stuckey escort him because, as I said before, salvia can affect your motor skills. And he appears very wobbly, which is normal after you've taken salvia. He's doing great. It's driving like this. That's what I wouldn't do. Just talk as we're walking, we're walking we can exactly do. how you're feeling. Give us your reactions to anything you're feeling as we're moving out here. What are you experiencing right now? The walking is very challenging. It's that feeling of walking on clouds almost. Mm -hmm. Now we'll step up. And then go ahead and have a seat right here. And then put your back in this direction. All right. So just seconds ago, researcher Michael Yank smoked salvia. It's a hallucinogenic drug. It's legal in 38 states. He agreed to do this to help create awareness about how dangerous it is. We're here with Michael Linden, a psychologist, and David Stuckey, a clinical psychologist and psychedelic drug expert. We're going to talk about the effects of salvia and what it's doing right now to Michael, his brain, and his body. What are you feeling, Michael? You know, it's difficult to describe, but it's as if you have pressure coming out from the inside of your hands and from the inside of your body. It's, you don't lose control of your hands, obviously, but it's very difficult to be articulate to, uh, to speak to you right now. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, I definitely don't think I could drive, but I could obviously stagger across the stage. How do you feel emotionally? It's hard to focus. It's as if, it's almost as if you had a, a viewer watching you within yourself, which I know sounds absolutely ridiculous, mm -hmm. but it's that, the feeling of, of being yourself within your body is lost, which I know also sounds really kind of ridiculous, but that's, def that's the only way I can describe it, I think. Yes. Now, you were telling me before one of the experiences that you were having was that whatever you were viewing in front of you was in existence, and the things that were behind you that you could not see were actually felt like they physically disappeared. Does that, are you experiencing that now or not? I'm not feeling that now, but that is, a, that is a feeling that you get where the things that are not within your field of vision are not within your reference point of reality, which again sounds obviously crazy, but it's wherever you're not casting your gaze doesn't really figure into how you view the world. And Dr. Yang, you were telling me before that you felt an anxious, kind of dark, dark feeling before the first time. Are you feeling that now? Not as much as I felt prior, but it's like a, it's almost like a generalized anxiety. I and mean, just sitting here is kind of physically uncomfortable in my chest, in my hands. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on in his brain. We've done the EEGs, yeah. which is this contraption on Michael's head right now. And I know we did one before when he wasn't on salvia. That's right. Right. Well, let me tell you about the EEG. The EEG are the brain waves. So we all have brain waves, and they tell you what state your brain is in, if you're alert, if you're awake. So this is a normal EEG, and you see how all these lines are pretty flat. They go up and down about the same speed. Each of those, there's 19 lines, each of those, or each one of these electrodes. So we look at EEGs to look at seizure disorders. We're now looking at, we look for sleep research. Now we're looking at EEGs to look at attention deficit disorder and autism. But we also look at EEGs to see states of consciousness. And there's some very unique patterns that happen when people are in different states of consciousness and different drugs that are used that are related to this. And um, one of the things they're, do, they're doing with this drug is they are using it to help medication research, to find pathways to medications for schizophrenia and bipolar and Alzheimer's 
But I'll let Dr. Stuckey kind of show you what patterns happen when somebody uses a drug like this. This particular pattern that you see on the right as opposed to the left is a pattern that is very unique, a, a signature pattern to Salvia divinorum. Experienced psychedelic users often say that this particular experience, even if they're very experienced, will say, wow, that was really weird. And, and very right different. now, are you still feeling the much, effects? Much, much better. I have to tell you that when, and it's only been a, number, a couple of minutes, mm -hmm. we, as you guys have been standing here talking, at, when I walked out, I was completely, it's, your world is here. You know, maybe two, three, four feet. I'm really glad to have good Dr. Stuckey here with me. Otherwise, I had, there's no chance I would have made it from there to here. And it's amazing to see something so quick take you completely out of yourself, out of your norm, right. and then deposit you right back into your normal state.